It's that time of year. We're predicting which cameras will come out in 2023. And we've got some very interesting prospects here. Yeah, this is fun, but I also think it's really useful because some of you are making buying decisions and you might want to just put that off until you see what we think is coming. We'll tell you all about it. We Canon, have Nikon, Sony, Fuji, Panasonic, Olympus. But first, we want to thank our sponsor, Squarespace. Whether you need your own website, store, portfolio, gallery, or a place to book clients, Squarespace makes it super easy. And you can just try it for free. No credit card needed, no risk, nothing to lose. Go to squarespace.com slash Chelsea. And if you decide you want to keep it, and I know you will, use the coupon code Chelsea to get 10% off. That's C-H-E-L-S-E-A. Thanks, Squarespace. Let's get right into it. We'll start with Fujifilm. We're going to save the best for last. Okay. I think Fujifilm is going to make a few updates. We've seen the X-H2 and X-H2S, the X-T5, and the main thing that they're doing is they're increasing the frame rate, but mostly they're improving the autofocus, something they like sorely need to do. I think they'll just refresh some other cameras with that same software, including the GFX100. This is like an older system camera, but I always thought it was so cool that you could change out the viewfinder and kind of build it out. It reminded me of the medium format cameras of the past that I love so much. Like your RB67. Exactly. I, I think it's such a cool system, but it had such painfully slow autofocus. And with 100 megapixels, you really need precise autofocus. So I think they'll go ahead and improve that, crank up the processing power. I think it'll be the same 100 megapixel sensor. And you think they're going to lower the price? I think it'll come down from like 10,000 to about 8,000. Now these are selling now for closer to like 5,000, at okay. least refurbished or used. So the prices come down a lot, but it needs a refresh. It's due. I'm thinking they're also going to come out with the X-T40 and the X-Pro4 and that those are also going to have better autofocus. This is what we see happen all of the time. They're tweaking things, they're seeing complaints, they're making them better and they're putting them in the newest models. The X-Pro3 introduced that weird hidden back screen mm -hmm. where it just shows a little film box top. Yeah, you loved that. Do you think they'll keep that? Because it was very controversial. Or will they go back to a conventional screen? I think that they're going to keep it because I think Fuji likes to do things that are a little different, that harken back to the film days and are about the user experience. What do you think? My preference would be just get rid of the whole rear screen. If you want to use the menus, you could use the viewfinder Whoa. because that's an option. But you know me, I like my like a M10D with no rear screen at all. I like to be totally analog. Let's talk about the lenses Fuji might come out with. I think they're going to do the 16 to uh, 55 f2.8 2. So that will be another update. And also, I think they'll update the 50 to 140 because this is their two parts of their holy trinity of lenses. And yeah. these lenses are so old and they're really showing their age. Like if you compare the autofocus speed and the sharpness against their more recent lenses, they're old. <laughs> they need it. It's way outdated. Yeah. And if they're caring more about resolution with these super high megapixel cameras, they're also going to want better lenses, better glass to make it makes sense. Yeah, that's true. I feel like we should also mention that we have a new dog here. Her name is Kit. Oh, yeah. She's just a baby and I'm holding her because she'll wreak havoc if we're not holding her. Yeah. And if you don't follow us on social media, we lost Sandy, the older dog that we had a few weeks back. Yeah. But we're happy to have Kit in the family. Yeah. Now let's talk about Panasonic. Let's talk about it. What um, do you think's happening? I don't think we're going to see updates to the Micro Four Thirds system this year. If they do, it'll be really minor thing, maybe like a firmware update. But I do think they're going to focus on their full frame system. People were really excited about their full frame system. So an S12 seems like it could be on the horizon. And I'm guessing that they're going to improve the autofocus because that's been the thing a lot of people have been complaining about. Literally all our predictions are this camera is going to improve the autofocus. That's what all the manufacturers seem to be focused on. But also because that was what was set back the most when we switched from DSLR to mirrorless. They yeah. just had to reinvent that whole thing. I also think we'll get like proper 4K60 full width and just generally better performance from it. Now, the S1R was launched at the same time as the S1. They're both due, and I think we'll see refreshes for both. The S1R is the high megapixel version of that other camera. And they're almost identical, except for having a 47 megapixel sensor instead of a 24 megapixel sensor. So I think we'll see the same updates and I think it'll catch up to the R5 and offer 8K at at least 30 frames per second. But they okay. are so video focused, I wouldn't be surprised if they gave us 8K at 60 frames per second, just so they could match up to the Nikon Xenon. I think you should go for it and predict the 60 frames per second. You know what, Panasonic is ambitious. They are. And I also wanna say, 
I think these prices are going to be very competitive. I think the S1 is going to be about $2,500, and this one's, the S1R is going to be close to like $3,200. So I think they're going to undercut the competition, which I think is a good approach to take. I think it is because a lot of people that try their cameras love them. They just need to hook people. They get, need to get them to try them. Yeah. Let's talk about Olympus. I'm interested so, in this one. I just realized I already made a mistake because I put Olympus on the slide, but it should be OM system. And I haven't oh. gotten out of the habit of calling them Olympus yet, but Olympus doesn't have a camera company anymore. Anyway, OM. Sorry, OM. What do you think? Well, in the past year, we've seen updates to the EM1, and they call it the OM1. And we yeah. saw the EM5 updated to the OM5. And either one were particularly revolutionary, but they added some firmware updates and rebranded it. I think we'll see the same with their entry-level camera. The EM10 will become the OM10. It'll have the same 20 megapixel sensor that everybody's kind of tired of. Yeah. I think we won't see any big changes from the EM10 Mark IV, except mostly software-based stuff, maybe a faster processor. But as a result, again, we'll see better autofocus. I haven't kept up. Have OM systems people been satisfied with the updates that have been made on these cameras, or were they hoping for more? Some people are very happy about the OM1, mm -hmm. but they are particularly irritated that they haven't gotten a higher megapixel sensor, which I totally understand because yeah. they have a lot of really good glass, but they all have this 20 megapixel sensor, which just is not keeping up. You know, we have the R7, which is less expensive and has a bigger sensor, an APS-C Canon camera, and I think it's, what, 32 megapixels? So, like, more than 50% more pixels. I'm going to hope for them that they at least get a 24 megapixel sensor. Yeah, that would be a significant upgrade. All right, let's talk about Nikon. I feel like it's just a given that they're going to update the Z9 software again and improve the autofocus. Yeah, I think we'll see at least firmware 4.0, if not version 5.0. You know what gets my goat? When we get absolutely demolished for saying autofocus isn't good, and now we're on, then the software updates come up and they just keep improving it. There's nothing wrong with that. It's wonderful. I love that companies keep improving things with software updates. That's what I think is going to happen here again. Yeah, they're not improving upon perfection. They are patching in the problems that we and other reviewers have found. Yeah. But I'm glad to see them doing it. I will say, when I talk to Nikon people who don't have the Z9, they're a little upset that they don't get any firmware updates. They're like, where's the updates to my yeah. Z6, my Z7? I think that they're going to get them eventually, but this Z9 really has to keep up with the competition. They have to stay in the big three. They have to be on par with uh, the Canon R5, the Canon R3, and also with the Sony Alpha 1. And they're Oh, they're getting there. I think once they get it down, they're going to trickle it down into other cameras. Yeah, the Z9 software updates feel almost like it's a beta platform. Like every firmware update I've installed, I've found like new bugs yeah. that then they will fix in a later firmware update. But I would appreciate it if they would just like work out those kinks before rolling it out to the other cameras. I think you probably would. Too. I don't think that they had a choice because they need to keep their customers. Yeah. And so they had to get the camera out and then improve it. So... Here's a prediction based on our last test of the Z9. They introduced an APS-C mode with, I think, 60 frames per second. And we shot it for wildlife. Can I say that was remarkable? It worked really well in APS-C mode. It worked so much better than in full frame mode. And I thought, this is the best APS-C wildlife camera I have ever shot. But the problem was, it was like $5,500 and full frame sensors where you were just wasting half of it. Mm -hmm. What they really needed to do was to take that and just making an APS-C camera at a lower price point. And then they would have a real winner. And that made me think of our D500. We love the that. The DSLR that was like our favorite wildlife camera because it was like a pro body but with a smaller sensor. So you got the extra reach on your existing telephoto lenses. I think they should and will do that. I think they will make a Z500. So it would be like a baby Z9, 20 megapixels, 30 frames per second, no mechanical shutter. And of course, not the huge price tag of the Z9, maybe about 2000 maybe a little more. You, you, you're right. I think like 2500 That sounds like it might be right, yeah. We had a hit on our hands with the Nikon ZFC. It was Nikon's attempt to take on the Fuji market. I thought it was their attempt to take on Fuji, yeah. But cameras should be stylish. They should be fun. You have to have it around your neck all the time. It shouldn't look like the same 1980s DSLR that they all look like, right? I totally agree. Give us a little chrome. Give us a little retro vibe. Make it cool. Make us Photography cool. is supposed to be cool. I know it's hard to do, Nikon, but try to make me cool. <laughs> so it's going to be, you're thinking like a Nikon ZF, like a full frame ZFC. Yeah, and 
My biggest question, I think this is coming, my biggest question is what camera will it be based on? I, will it be based on the low end Z5 or will they go higher end and give it like a Z6 or a Z7 body with higher megapixels? I, my guess, I don't think so because I think they're going to want to keep the price point down. Yeah, so I'm guessing it's going to be a Z5 and a retro body and ballpark $1,500? This next prediction isn't really a prediction. We just stole it from the Nikon lens roadmap. These are the lenses they're saying are going to happen in 85 millimeter. We're guessing it's going to be f one two, a 35 millimeter, we're guessing it's going to be f14, a 12 to 28 millimeter power zoom, so that will be competing with that cool Sony power zoom that we really love, that won the lens of the year mm -hmm. in our Pixel Awards, you should watch that video, uh, and then a 200 to 600 millimeter, that'll be great for wildlife, that's an exciting one I think, yeah. and a Tamron 70 to 180, where'd you get that Tamron one from? The roadmap has 70 to 180 on it, and they yeah. have been just rebranding Tamron lenses. And oh. Tamron has a 71. Uh -huh. So it's not going to be branded Tamron, but it's going to be Tamron. Okay. But at least they're doing something they're for doing third party lenses, right? Yeah. Even if they just slap the word Nikon <clears throat> on it and charge you. Canon. They charge you like an extra 500 bucks yeah. over the Tamron price, but it's still okay. it's better than Canon, right? If you want something totally affordable that's going to improve your photography and the way people see you as a photographer, consider getting your own Squarespace website because I always look at someone's website instead of their social media when I'm taking them seriously. And you want people to land on your page, see your best photos, see your client gallery, see that you're selling prints, seeing everything that you do and what you excel at. So go to squarespace.com slash Chelsea. Try it out for 14 days. You do not need a credit card. You don't have to remember to cancel. It's just free. And then when you get it, because I know you're going to, get 10% off with the coupon code CHELSEA. That's C-H-E-L-S-E-A. Here's my thing. Like, have an Instagram, yes. have a Facebook, yeah. where people can discover you. Mm -hmm. But then use those to channel them to your Squarespace, where your images, your video are presented well where people can book an appointment and they can buy prints and stuff, stuff you cannot do on social media. You know why? Because social media, they want to make their own money. They're not there for you to make money. Yeah. Squarespace is there to support you, whether you're an amateur or a professional. And that's why you need your own space, your own domain name, all that. Thank you, Squarespace. The big two are left, Sony, Sony and, and Canon. Canon. I, I really want that Z500 from Nikon because yes. I like powerful APS-C cameras and I think Sony's gonna do that. They've been building out their APS-C lens lineup, but they're, all their APS-C cameras, all the new ones are low-end creator cameras. They haven't updated the more traditional sports wildlife cameras in a few years. It's overdue. So I think we're gonna see a Sony A10. Or A1000. Oh. I'm not sure what they're going to call it. Like it a baby, A1, like a baby Alpha One. Exactly. Okay. I think it'll have two card slots, but it'll have an APS-C sensor, and it'll match the A1's 30 frames per second. We'll get basically that same autofocus system. That would be incredible. Yeah. Now, I'm not sure about the megapixels because Sony has not released a high megapixel APS-C camera, and here's why I'm confused. The A1 has a stacked sensor, and that's why it's able to shoot at that high frame rate without wrecking it with rolling shutter. Mm -hmm. If they give it a stacked sensor, that makes the sensor very expensive. If they did that, it could be a higher megapixel sensor, like 30 or even 45 megapixels and stacked, but it would be a high price point. Or they could go with a lower megapixel sensor and not have to use a stacked sensor because you'd be able to read out fewer megapixels faster, and thus it wouldn't be as important. So it could be lower end like 20 megapixels give a similar performance with enough resolution for most people, but at, at a lower price point. I don't think that they would go 20 megapixels. You just don't really see that anymore. It's really all about how they word the marketing often. I just don't think that they would go below 24 megapixels for marketing purposes. And Canon's version of this is the R7, which is like 32 megapixels with a high frame rate. And even though it has lots of rolling shutter, that they don't surface that in the marketing material, so you don't necessarily know that or appreciate it. Okay, so maybe you're right. Maybe it'll be higher megapixel, and maybe rolling shutter will just be a problem, or maybe they'll make it higher end. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking it'll be a little bit expensive, like 2000 to $2,500, depending on which of those capabilities they end up choosing. The Sony A93, it's due. It'll be an R3 competitor because they don't have one right now. It's probably going to have about 24 megapixels. They need to match the frames per second that we're getting out of like the Z9 and the R3. And these yeah. frames per second are getting out of control. It's like a frames per second war. It used to be yeah. about megapixels and now they're like frames per second. 
they used to argue like, oh, 10 frames per second versus 12 frames mm-hmm. per second. And now we're doing like 30, 40, 120 frames per second. I yeah. think the R3 does 180 frames per second in traverse. So it's completely out of control. But mm-hmm. Sony's not really part of that game yet. And I think they will be. It's going to be like a stack sensor. And I think we'll see 40 frames per second, full resolution, 24 megapixels, and then at least 120 frames per second, either in extremely short bursts or in like a lower resolution. What about pre-capture? They need that. They do not like to be behind you. I think you're right. They have to introduce that. I okay. love how much you're saying I'm right. <laughs> what else am I right about? <laughs> and I think the price will be about what it is now, about $4,500. So for serious pros. Okay. And then I, kind of a layup too, I think they'll continue updating the firmware for the A1, even though that's already a couple of years old now. Here's the thing, we tested the A7R5, and it had some really cool features that the A1 didn't have yet, like plane detection and train detection. And I think they're going to trickle those firmware updates up to the A1. Another feature I think we'll see is the smarter pixel shift from the A7R5, where it can detect motion and remove it. Mm-hmm. Pixel shift is this tech that moves the sensor and allows you to create a 200 megapixel image from the 50 megapixel sensor. So I think that will now allow for motion detection and removal in their post-processing app. What about software that detects the best looking person in a group photo? Oh. Pretty person detection. I see. You just want a camera that always focuses on you. No matter how many people are in the group. That was really sweet. (laughs) We also think that Sony is going to update the A7C and come out with an A7C2. Because it wasn't... The A7C was based on the A7 III, Mm -hmm. which is now a very old and outdated camera. It had the old menu system. The autofocus for things like video just wasn't wasn't good enough for me. But the A7 IV came out so much better. Higher megapixels. I think they'll just take the A7 IV, cram it into a smaller body... (laughs) Give it a little strip of chrome and a rangefinder style viewfinder. Love finder. that strip of chrome. They do that, yeah, they do that retro thing. And then it'll be like a single card slot because they need to make it a little more compact and probably costs like two grand. How about lenses? What do you think they'll come out with? I think we'll finally see an 85 millimeter F12 GM because they do not like to be left behind. And Canon and Nikon both are making these F12 lenses. And like my favorite lens in the world is the Canon 85 F12 RF lens and Sony does not have a version of it and I know they don't want us picking up our R5 just to use that lens. That's right? true. We have been boasting about that lens for Canon. That's great. But it's going to be expensive, probably like $2,600, like the price of a whole camera. They It'll have... be big and heavy too, but smaller than Canon's because Sony is just, they're good at making lenses they are. compact. I also feel like that's a lens though where you people rent it. <laughs> Yeah. Or they buy it and you turn around and resell it for the same price, pretty much. They also really got to update the 85 F1.4. Like, whenever I break that out, I'm like, oh, this is the old G Master. (laughs) Back when autofocus was slow and it has, like, lots of chromatic, it just wasn't a perfect lens. We don't agree about this one. But my biggest complaint about Sony has been the price of CF Express Type A cards. All the recent cameras adopted this extremely unusual format that nobody else uses, CF Express Type A, and those cards cost uh, roughly four times what the cards for Canon or Nikon cost. Mm-hmm. And they have half the performance. It is outrageous. So you think they're going to lower the price? I think they'll figure out, maybe they'll introduce more third parties that will have lower price. Or maybe they'll re- release like a lower end version of it. But I think they'll find some way to drive that price down. I don't think they will because I've noticed the manufacturers keep pushing their high-priced items deeper into the system so that when you buy into the system, you're like, oh, the body was cheap. Oh, but the lenses are expensive. Oh, the lens are cheap too. Oh, but the memory card's expensive. They need to compete up front. And what do you put the price on? The camera when people buy into a system. Most people only look at the camera price. Mm -hmm. They don't even think about the memory card. They have to make their money somewhere. And I think that they probably need to keep this up for a little bit longer while they're in this really intense race with Canon. And last but not least is Canon. Let's try to predict what they're going to do here. I was wondering, we have the Nikon ZFC, this retro camera. We have the Sony that we were just talking about. Why doesn't Canon have a new retro camera? I'm wondering if they're going to come out with one. I, we have that. AE1 that's behind me there and I always thought that was such a beautiful beautiful. design from like the late 70s and please just make me a full frame digital camera that looks exactly like the AE1 same like shutter speed dial and everything what if you had like an R10 in the AE1 body 
Oh, yeah, that would be great. That, that would, would be, be so popular. That would There's be no cool. There's no reason for cameras to be all black anymore. And now the Canon R1. This is the flagship that everybody's been waiting for. Sony released the A1 two years ago, and then last year Nikon released the Z9. And we're all just looking at Canon. And Canon gives us an R3. So I think it's finally the year for Canon. Canon, they're a little more conservative. They tend to wait until things are ready. But they're playing catch up now. They're a couple of years behind. So you're thinking the R1's gonna come out? Yeah, and it'll be, have a high megapixel sensor, like 45 to 50 megapixels. And I think they have to beat the Z9 and the A1. So I think RAW files, 40 frames per second, at least at full resolution. And then they'll probably do the Nikon thing and offer higher frame rates with lower resolutions or for extremely limited periods of time. I think they're gonna try pre-capture. I know that's been my prediction, but that's really cool technology. I'd like to see that in more cameras. Yeah, the, the R7 has that, but their implementation of it is appalling. Like that workflow would never work for the professional audience that the R1 targets. Yeah. So I agree they have to do something, but they'll have to rework it so it fits into the pro workflow. We'll see. And I think it's going to be very expensive. I think Canon sees themselves as better than Sony and Nikon, so they tend to charge more. They also have the biggest built-in audience. Like they're yeah. still the number one manufacturer. More people have Canon cameras than any other camera by far. Yeah. So I think they can charge maybe eight thousand dollars for this. Like it's, it's going to be painful. But Canon will also release a low-end APS-C camera for creators. This is their version of the Sony ZV E10 or the Nikon Z30. No viewfinder, flip forward screen. For all the TikTokers and YouTubers out there, I think it'll mostly just be that. It'll probably do 4K 30 full width or 4K 60 cropped. I think as a stills camera, it'll work. It'll probably have 10 frames per second, kind of like the, it'll be like an R10, yeah. but scaled down with no viewfinder and maybe $700. That'd be interesting to see. I think there has to be a Canon R5 II. I think that they're due because the Alpha 1 just outperformed it. So I think that they're going to improve the autofocus specifically because that's where it's lagging a little bit with the Alpha 1. It's not bad. It's just quirky. Like I had to program the back button autofocus to two separate modes because of the way it tracks. Yeah. So I, I'm hoping for that. I'm thinking that they're going to do that. What are your predictions? I think th right now it has 8K at 30 frames per second raw. And it yeah. does really well at that, but it doesn't record for long. It overheats. I think they will improve that. And I think they might even crank it up to 8K 60 in order to just outperform the all deal. the other 8K cameras out there like the Nikon Z9. But what about the R5C? You think that they're going to impede on that territory at all? Because they're really making a point of separating video from stills. They're just so protective. They never want to cannibalize their profits from other products. That is a really good point. So maybe it will be 8K 60, but maybe it'll be limited to 10 minutes. It's going to be throttled. Up in your hands. Whatever you want it to be, it's going to be throttled. I think they'll keep the same 12 frames per second mechanical shutter because I think they're running up against like physical limits. Mm -hmm but they'll increase the electronic shutter to 30 frames per second. But I don't think it's going to be a stacked sensor. It'll probably be the same 45 megapixel sensor. So we'll have the same issues that we now have with rolling shutter. And mm -hmm. it'll technically do it. It'll be a great spec. But for wildlife and stuff, you'll probably still be using the mechanical shutter. And I think the price will stay about the same, about $3,900. Lenses. The RF lineup is actually like really lagging. It's a little sparse. We still don't have... 24 or 35 millimeter primes with like fast professional primes at all. A 24 millimeter prime is crucial, especially now that people are doing more video. Yeah, exactly. Like those are the creator lenses that we use the most and there are no LRF glass. Like we still have to use old DSLR lenses with an adapter. So I think we'll see a 24 and 35 F14. And then I think they will make lower end versions of the 50 and 85 f1.2 because those are chunks. They are fantastic lenses, but they are so big, heavy, and expensive. Nothing wrong with that baby. I think they'll make f1.4L versions okay. of these lenses to slot between the f1.2 and f1.8. What about anti-theft technology? Are we ever going to get it? No. They don't care. No, they, they do not care. They don't like to do, like that would require connectivity and stuff. It just yeah. doesn't seem that hard to do. Cars and smartphones and so many other things have tools. Yeah. That implemented anti-theft. Professional sure they, drills. They could. Okay, I have a prediction. How big do you think Kit is going to get? She is 15 weeks and about 12 pounds. I'm thinking based on the size of her big old paws, I'm thinking she's going to be like 28 pounds. Oh, I'm going to say 
27 go one pound under oh your price is riding me <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much for watching if you have any predictions about what cameras might be coming out or what improvements may be coming to these cameras let us know in the comments below and of course don't forget to subscribe to the picture this photography podcast we put out two podcasts per month in both video and audio so if you're like me and you like to watch or listen to your podcast on the treadmill then come on get it help us out and thank you Squarespace for making this podcast possible. If you want to try your very own Squarespace website or portfolio store, place to book appointments, you have to check it out. It's super easy to do. We recommend it to people in real life too, and they always like it. So go to squarespace.com Chelsea. Use the coupon code Chelsea to get 10% off. That's C-H-E-L-S-E-A. That's my name. Use it in this context. Goodbye. Thanks to Squarespace. Don't forget to subscribe. Bye. Super